I'm going to do a super brief walkthrough on our go to market. So, you know, I mentioned, and you heard many times today, uh, conversation and, and referring to this as a product. It really isn't a product, right? It is a project. That's a big difference, meaning Protocol Labs is not owning this, paying for this, whatever. We are putting people on it because we care about it and we want it to exist in the world, but these are a set of protocols and a set of standards and a set of open source things that ultimately, if Protocol blew up tomorrow, ideally would continue to exist in the world and go forward. So I cannot stress that enough. That said, that doesn't mean that we're not going to bring this to market in as forceful and powerful and enthusiastic way as possible and have me go out and, and talk to a whole lot of people. Um, or one or whoever can volunteer. So um, I'm gonna walk through what we think it looks like. Again, this is really just a plan for a plan, the broad outline of the things we're gonna cover. It's not gonna go into any depth and you're mostly gonna be dissatisfied, I'm sure, but uh, the idea is, you know, we're starting the conversation now because now is the time when we go forward and we establish what we care about and why we will decide to go to market and ideally what um, you know my grandma uh, would want to hear. Uh, so vision hasn't transformed since this morning when I said it. We want to transform big data by giving developers simple first class develop, uh, distributed tools for debugging, for building, for um, uh, you know, spinning out, for doing all these things um, in a new collaborative ecosystem. The goals haven't changed, right? We want it to be simple, we want to deliver performance improvements, and we want to launch a new collaborative science community. Roadmap hasn't changed either. May, we have something out there, anyone can run it. October, it is now at scale, still no incentives, can't stress that enough. We want to think about incentives, but, but that will come later. So. The overall approach to this is um, really that first bolded word is the key one, right? We want to be coordinated. And that doesn't mean that we're gonna have, you know, an edict from God saying, go do this on this day. But that doesn't mean we'd have to be like absolute chaos either, right? We could have ideas to, you know, post to Hacker News on this day and tweet about it on this day and go pitch whatever ACM on this day and so on and so forth. This is just something that we can do in an organized fashion. And it'll be up to me to help organize that. Um, additionally, you know, we know that, you know, even in this room, um, people are like, I could use this tomorrow. You know, Alex just finished an entire talk saying like, I, as a former Landsat user, could have used this you know, at my job before we even launch. So that's a great sign. We should find other early adopters to help vet our assumptions and make it right. But then we, we can't ignore the fact that those early adopters are but one segment of our audience. And we need to think about the broad community, the broad scalable platform and how we engage those people as well. And this is a spectrum that we will slowly grow into. Uh, can't stress these enough, it is open source. It is decentralized and it is community driven. If tomorrow a thousand people show up and say, we think you should only support whatever, vCenter, I have no idea. Uh, guess what, we're supporting vCenter. That's a community, okay? We lose. That, I mean, it's not a loss. It means that you have a thousand engaged users. That's awesome. That is a good thing. It's not what I would want, but it's a good thing, okay? Uh, and we, I cannot stress that enough. We are community driven, but that does not mean uncoordinated. Okay, cool? Okay, so critical elements to GTM. Uh, you know, you've heard this over the course of the day. This is just uh, me, you know, hacking at this. Nothing special here uh, and shouldn't be anything new. Uh, number one, user experience. We are user experience driven. I cannot stress that enough. Unless we hit the user experience that we approve of, you know, we're not moving. That said, if we're not nauseous with our first user experience, we're waiting too long. Okay, can't stress that either, right? That's the way it is. Perfectionists, sorry, um, come back later. Come back never, because this will never be perfect. Um, our goal is to verify the, our assumptions with as many users as possible and just prioritize and say, hey, you know what? We've tested it with 1,000 people, 200 said this, 700 said this, whatever. Great, that's our stack. We then as a community decide like, okay, when we get to number four, we're done, we're public. That's the way it is. It will never be at 1,000 and it will never be at zero um, for each of those. Uh, I, we mentioned already we want to be very simple in, the, in our initial scope. 
inline bash, Python files, a Docker container, these kind of things. We're not trying to do distributed training. We're not trying to do any kind of like, you know, massive reductions and compl complex DAGs and things like that uh, at the start. Uh, it's just, we, we just don't know how much people would actually use it for that. And so it's up to us to keep it small so that we can get it out there fast. Uh, same thing with types of files. Again, uh, this is just me speculating, but less than 32 gigabytes, tabular, maybe unstructured images, but that's it, right? Uh, uh, 400 gigabyte uh, video files, probably not gonna start with that, okay? Second, quality, production ready. Uh, the thesis is that many systems that have come before, both Web 2 and Web 3, uh, that have struggled did so because they tried to put the cart before the horse, uh, uh, building incredibly cool little Python, uh, DAG executors or something like that that couldn't scale past a single machine, those kind of things. But then also, obviously, many of the uh, Web 3 tool chains that have struggled, you know, it just, they just don't work. Um, and they really suffer from that UX component as well. Again, like the lack of debuggability, the lack of like mapping to the individual things is a, a big deal. Uh, when we say production, we mean production. Um, you know, I, I have down here, I didn't close the, uh, or finish the parentheses, excuse me, but you know, a thousand node cluster. Again, we can put some placeholder stakes here. Uh, just Fermi estimation is fine. Um, you know, 100, 1,000, 10,000, whatever it is, we should all come up with those numbers and call it a day. Um, and then we'll put that stake in the ground. And we can decide, again, we're, this is not a waterfall project. We're not deciding all these things here. We're writing them down and we're reevaluating as constantly as we possibly can, okay? Um, there's one really key thing here that I, I put it in parentheses, I really should have put it in bold. Uh, unless we can measure the system, we're not launching either. Okay? No launching it out to the world and just guessing that this is going on. Whatever measurement is, we're gonna measure. Okay? Sorry everyone, but it's happening. And then launch partners. Um, uh, I put down, I'm, I'm a little bit more ambitious than Wes, but only by one. So I want two partners in each of those categories, real people who have signed up, real human beings to at least give a shit about the thing, right? Like. If you have, a, you know, whatever, people signing up and f filing issues and bugs with your thing, that is an awesome sign. That means someone, human being, has taken time out of their life to complain about you to you. They didn't just complain on Twitter. They're in your repo complaining. That is such an awesome sign. It is so much better than meh, good enough, right? I'm telling you, it is good. And we need that. And so um, I want that. And then... Uh, I really do want people building on top of this. So I put down five, again, I, I don't care, Fermi estimation is fine, but like I want people actually embedding this into our products. And so, you, I mean, we have Dash in the front seat, right? He's already ready. So that's great, we have one. But like I want a lot more, and I've talked to lots of partners out there, and they really don't want to build a lot of this shit themselves. They're like, this is a commodity. This is not gonna differentiate my business from any other business. How do I hand this to you so you can go support it? That's our job, okay? Um, this is the tiered approach. Uh, uh, you can't see any of this. These are circles. <laughs> These are concentric circles. Uh, they don't, doesn't translate very well. I don't know why this is so washed out, but regardless. It's even washed out over there, so it's not just a light thing, I think. But regardless, um, we have this core team that will you know, be the people in there and working on it, continuing to work on it. I, again, if the core team isn't using it, myself, like I'm in there writing tests today, right? With sample, sed, and awk, and grep. Uh, and we need lots of those, right? So we should be trying this out ourselves. We're gonna find plenty of bugs. Um, we're not production users and we are not the users. So like we can't overtrain on us, but there you go. Uh, early adopters, I think this is the most critical and, um, and really getting outside of the people who care about the stuff to actually building on it is gonna be really important and then expansion from there. And this really does, you know, there, we're, this is not day driven, but it's also not something that should go on forever. If we, you know, we're whatever, four months in and we don't feel comfortable going beyond early adopters, something is wrong and we should take a, you know, hard look at it. Um, the general go to market again, it's just kind of a broad strokes here. Don't anchor on this too deeply, but like we can do stuff now around defining our product, defining how we talk about it, defining how we onboard a partner, um, uh, understanding what audiences we wanna go after, what conferences we should speak at, our developer guide, our experience guide, our blog strategy. Like these are all things that we can just write down now and, and begin to talk about. These are things that we've seen be successful in the past and we're gonna go forward with them. Uh, then, you know, 
lining up what we're gonna do around launch, and it's not a one day thing. I can't tell you enough, I've, I've been on projects, I've been at companies which had whatever, you know, uh, 400 media mentions in a day, and you would be shocked at how fast that disappears. Like within a week, people are already not talking about you. And you're like, what the hell, didn't this matter? It is not that, it's gotta be rolling thunder. I love, uh, so when I did launch Kubernetes, we would do a, for every launch, we would do a five days of Kubernetes, and then we would do five weeks, right? So the first five days, every day we'd get a blog post that we would share and so on and so forth. Um, uh, it, each one would be focused on a feature. The feature would be very narrow. It would be, the blog post would be two pages max. It would describe how to use it and why you cared. And that was it, that was five days. And then for five weeks, you would just do an example a week. Here's how to use that feature in this great thing. And uh, you know, it did pretty well. Um, and we would do that every quarter. We would do a point release every quarter and we would do that for several years. And it, it, it takes much less time than you would think and the best part is it's l documentation that lives forever. I still reference blog posts uh, when I'm trying to figure out Kubernetes today about node selectors and shit. Like I'm telling you, those are still super useful. Um, so if we do it right. And then obviously, you know, I don't want to overstate the value of social and, and forums and ecosystems, but ha us being out there and being present is valuable. And it's not uh, incredibly sexy stuff, but it works. Uh, you're out there, you engage, you answer people's questions in a you know, friendly way, and, and you'd, be, you'd be stunned at how valuable that is. Uh, and post-launch in, in particular, um, again, I want us to make other people successful. Uh, you know, it's not the uh, uh, most you know, um, uh, well-regarded guy in history, but like I love the Steve Ballmer quote from years ago, which said, for every one dollar that we make, other people make nine dollars, right? Based on our system, based on Microsoft software. That is an amazing idea and stat. And for us to think that way, for us to say, for every one cycle of compute that runs on raw back of Yao, nine cycles of compute run like through Bacalhau via somebody else's platform. Something like that, I have no idea, right? But that kind of power is incredibly important. And so for us, that means that we have to take some part of the work highlighting our partners, highlighting what they're doing, highlighting how to use their stuff as well because we don't care. At the end of the day, we really don't. We want this to exist in the world because it needs to exist in the world because we want to move science and humanity forward. Ours is the base model. We want other people to go out and use the, you know, uh, 912 or the SX or whatever version of car you like. Uh, S class, sorry, S class and X, whatever. Um, you get the idea. But um, roadmaps, we want to be very, very public with roadmaps. We want to be very public with summits. Uh, I should be out there or whatever one or whoever wants to should be going out and giving keynotes at scientific conferences, at big data conferences, at everywhere and saying, look, this is yours. Come take it. It's yours. Please help. This is not us. Unlike other people who I will not name, I'll be happy to name uh, in a bit when we're not recording. Uh, we're not looking out there for evaluation on this. We're not looking for anything. We really do want society to move forward. This is a, the way we're going to help do it. Cool. Um, and then it's up to us to also come up with KPIs. So I mentioned me measurement before. Um, in addition to the raw performance measurements, which we desperately need, we need other things that we desperately need as well. So project adoption, project usage, project engagement, community engagement. These are all, you know, can be vanity metrics, but taken together can represent a holistic picture of the momentum and, and uh, direction of the company, or excuse me, project. Um, and it's incredibly important for us to be, you know, aware of. Uh, that said, you know, one thing I'm, I'm a huge, huge fan of is not um, building metrics just for the sake of, uh, like, whatever, your exec chain or your community to report on. It really should be you're building this because you want to know how your thing is doing. And you're measuring the success of the thing you're building. That's it and helps you guide your product roadmap because of this. If we're building things that we feel like are just for our own vanity or because we just want to feel good or because whatever, you know, our board wants to see it, we're doing it wrong. It has to be meaningful for us. Um, so that's our general go to market. Uh, that's the end of the slides uh, for today. Um, again, 
we are more than open for lots of conversations, partnerships, whatever you would like. This is very much in flight. And it's also some distance off, right? This is months in the future. That said, the more that we can think about these things now, the better we can set ourselves up and uh, get everything going. Does that all make sense?